Are you feeling tired all the time too? I can't believe how crazy it has seemed lately. No matter how much sleep I get or how perfectly I eat, I still seem tired all the time. And it didn't used to be this way. I don't remember ever feeling fatigue like I have felt in the recent year or two. And I know it's not just me either. Many of my friends and family are saying the same thing. So why are we tired all the time? I have a few theories that I want to share with you today and also the 11 tips on how I have not only made sense of what is happening, but have managed to regain some of my energy. Knowing how to not only understand what is happening, but also how to regain my energy has been life changing. And finally, I can show up to be the mother that I want to be, be present for my kids and actually enjoy life instead of always wanting a nap. When I'm too tired to show up for the people I love, they receive the message that maybe I don't love them or they're not important, which is the last thing I want to do. When I don't have enough energy for my business, it starts to get stagnant and maybe even starts to die. People like you who are here, who I want to help, can't receive the help that I need if I'm tired. And the same goes for you. If we're too tired to work out or to eat right, we're gonna sleep less and feel even more depressed and unhappy. You can't pour from an empty cup and that means having energy. Extreme fatigue is problematic in the world today, but there are things that we can do about it. Unfortunately, the phrase grow or die is actually true. We're always moving in one direction or the other. The question is, is it towards growth or is it towards fatigue and ultimate death? Now that might seem a little bit extreme, but sometimes it can feel like life isn't really worth living if we're too tired or depressed or exhausted to make a life worth living. And that's why figuring out this energy piece might be of the utmost important in our lives right now. Being tired was never part of my makeup. I was a very peppy, happy, optimistic, bubbly child. In fact, I had more energy than I knew what to do with. I had big dreams. I was going to make the world a better place. And I didn't really seem to care about all those people that told me I was overly optimistic. I even remember an older woman who said, oh, how cute, you're so naive. Don't worry, it won't last. And I remember making the conscious choice to say, no, I will not let the world beat me down. And it's interesting how defending that position requires a significant amount of energy. So let's get into the 11 tips of ways that I have found to not only defend my energy, but actually cultivate more, even in today's day and age. I'm gonna share with you something so amazing that you will not wanna miss it because it makes everything make sense. And along with some of these given things like sleep and diet, it, you know, those are kind of like, yeah, yeah, everybody knows that. I have to say them because not everybody knows that. So make sure you stick around to the end to catch these exciting two tips on why we are so fatigued and how we will regain our energy very, very soon. We'll get the easy and simple and obvious ones out of the way. Sleep has to be number one. If you're tired, you need rest. But what that also means is if you're tired, you should rest. Don't drink coffee. <laughs> Don't do all the other things to avoid the tiredness. If you haven't had enough sleep, we need to make time for a nap or to go to bed early. In fact, did you know if you have five hours or less, you can be considered cognitively intoxicated. So we definitely need to get our seven, eight, nine hours of sleep, depends on the person. Very, very few people are actually able to function properly on anything less than five hours. Not likely that you're one of them if you're here watching this video and feeling the fatigue. But it's also important to remember too much of a good thing is not a good thing either. So we don't want to sleep too much. Of course, it depends on the person. If you're anything like me, a highly sensitive person, by the way, I do also have a video with tips on things for highly sensitive people to help us navigate life. I'm one of those being get extra sleep. So for the highly sensitive person, sometimes it's necessary for us to get a little bit extra rest. I remember in college, I would feel so bad about taking a day off classes to just stay home and sleep. And of course I couldn't do that in high school uh, when I was living with my parents. And so college was that first time in my life where I could listen to what I needed. And the guilt of sleeping all day, I felt bad for skipping school and, and yet I was making good grades and keeping on top of things. I have a nervous system that is highly activated by the world today and needs some extra sleep. So know your chronotype, the time of day that you are most productive when you should exert the most amount of energy. Also, whether or not you're a night person or a morning person will be determined by your chronotype. So there's lots of free quizzes out there. Check that out. 
And then also know if you're a highly sensitive person and if you need extra sleep, go ahead and honor that. But if you find that you're sleeping too much, if you're sleeping every day for 10 and 12 hours a day, you're not getting up on time or at a reasonable time, uh, you're going to bed too late, um, then you may need to implement more structure around your day to make sure that you're waking with the sun and going to bed with the sunset. Of course, that's within a few hours. Getting sunlight in your eyes first thing in the morning is excellent for melatonin and resetting your bodily functions back to its normal circadian rhythms. If you do lack structure, maybe you don't have to go to work or maybe you could work on your own schedule, try to establish your own structure so that you're getting up at the same time of day, going to bed at the same time of day, take a shower, get ready, do your hair, be ready for life, not just for a planned meeting, but so that you can feel good about yourself and ready to go about your day. And that again, will help with your sleep patterns. Crazy, I know. And the second obvious topic that we have to discuss is dietary, of course. Having a good diet is essential and crucial to your energy and knowing whether or not you're consuming a lot of pesticides, genetically modified foods, which can be modified with pesticide DNA. So you have to be careful around that. Certainly if you talk to a farmer, they're mixing one seed with the other. That is not the kind of genetic modification we're talking about. Processed foods, sugary foods or rich foods can be very, very difficult for the body to process. Remembering that our cells are converting light into energy and that requires having a low toxic load. So if we have too many toxins, we're not converting light into energy and that can make us feel fatigued. And that is directly connected to our diet, the substances we put in our body, and of course, the things we breathe and things of that nature. Did you know that a plastic bottle of water can have up to 200,000 plastic particles in the water? That is very difficult for our bodies to process. They don't know what to do with that. And of course, that contributes to the toxic load, which will then make us feel fatigued. And while we're not eating our lotion, I have to throw in here as a bonus, anything that you put on your skin is going into your body or your bloodstream, just like the food. And so that also will contribute to the toxic load. Now, while sugar is not technically toxic, it can also cause fatigue because we have a glucose spike. And when we have a spike, that also means we'll have a dip. And not only will it cause the spike and dip causing fatigue, it causes aging, mood swings, and increases your hunger so that you will actually think you're hungry for even more food than you actually need. So sugar has very few positive benefits unless it's sugar in your fruit along with all of the fiber, so don't blend it either. And since we're calling this things you ingest instead of just food, we can also suggest supplements. I love things like Sam E or St. John's wort to help increase your mood. When you have a better mood, you have more happy hormones, you have more energy. Number three is breathing or air quality. Of course, making sure that you have a deep breath means you're taking in more of the breath of life, more prana, expanding your gut and having that Buddha belly breath can really bring in a lot of energy and vitality and nourishment through your breath. Oxygen is a lot less in abundance than it used to be because of forestation or the big trees that we used to have that we have cut down. And also our stress response to the world today, we are very shallow breathers. We are mouth breathers. So learn how to breathe properly so that you are nourishing your body and replenishing your energy regularly. Continuing to get the obvious things out of the way, the next one is sunlight. Obviously, sun and light is life. We need to make sure that we get at least 20 minutes a day. To me, that is bare minimum. Of course, it will depend on the person, but I find after 20 minutes, I have not had enough. So make sure you're getting as much sunlight as possible. Again, get first morning sunlight in your eyes first thing in the morning and also all throughout the day. Move, get outside. I like to go two, three times a day for walks. In general, we're getting a lot less sunlight than we used to. Make an effort to get out and get sunlight. Number five is touching on the same thing we mentioned earlier, that high toxic load. You want to understand your lymphatic system. Your lymph system or your lymphatic system is in charge of removing toxins from the body. But did you know, just like the veins run throughout our body, our lymphatic system also runs throughout our body. And yet it does not have its own pump. The lymphatic fluid is designed to be moved with muscle contraction. So as we pick a berry or we shoot a bow and arrow or we go hunting or we forage, 
we are moving our muscles, but we don't do that anymore. We sit at a desk all day and that's why they say sitting is like the new smoking. We have to be moving our lymphatic system with intention. So even things like gentle massage, understanding, go look on YouTube. You're on YouTube now. There's lots of different videos free to tell you how to do a lymphatic massage. I love, love, love doing this every morning in the shower. I have to tell you, um, you have a lymphatic or a lymph node here under your armpits. And when I massage that 20 times over, I can feel the difference. It is a world of difference with you can do a lymphatic massage every single day to help the body move those toxins out. And of course, high toxic load equals fatigue. And as we move the toxins out, we regain our energy and we have more zest for life, not to mention more energy to build a life we love. Now, number six might surprise some people. Our thoughts are extremely exhausting when they're predominantly negative. Did you know the brain has to match the thoughts that we feed it with the chemistry that floods the body. So if you think a stressful thought, if you think, oh, I'm being chased by a tiger, it's gonna go run, hurry, and your whole body is gonna be flooded with stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol. That will make you feel like crap. And if you're constantly living in that state of being, it is extremely exhausting for the body to try to manage and not be able to heal, digest, rest, grow, or repair if it is constantly living in that hypervigilant state. So we need to have positive thoughts that then flood the body with the positive hormones and chemicals that make us feel really good, that switch us into that rest and digest, healing, growth, and repair state of our nervous system. Which leads us to number eight, understand your nervous system, understand nervous system regulation, understand unhealed trauma, open stress responses, fight or flight, fawn or freeze. If you have no idea about any of those things and you're feeling very tired, this could be the number one thing making you feel fatigued. It is extremely exhausting for the body to live in that constant state of activation or aggravation, you could say. And many times, especially associated with the freeze state or the fawn state, which is the lowest state of the nervous system, meaning the dorsal vagal state, you will feel high levels of fatigue, exhaustion, a lack of motivation, doom scrolling, bed rot, things of this nature where you just really struggle to find motivation to get out and live life anymore. Along with that will come depression and anxiety, excessive consumption where we're constantly taking in and trying to figure out the world around us and how it works and yet not quite able to figure out how we move through life then you really want to look into trauma healing. I do something called trauma spotting. I do offer free 30 minute sessions. There's a link below. Otherwise go to your local practitioner. Just make sure you utilize somatic healing therapies because the body does keep the score. You have to work with the body to close those stress responses, heal your trauma and be able to regain your energy and be able to move through life the way you'd like to live. What's really fascinating about the world today, Dr. Gabor Mate wrote the book, The Myth of Normal. He tells us that the world today is traumatizing. So even if you feel like I had a good childhood or life hasn't been that bad or you didn't experience a toxic relationship or the military or really just an extended period of feeling unsafe can cause trauma, but you feel like I didn't really experience any of that. The world today, the hustle and grind culture, the refusal to acknowledge emotions, the suppression of needs and desires, living in a false uh, matrix that it causes you to wear a mask and become a person you're not, that alone is traumatizing and extremely exhausting. If we are inauthentic in our lives, we're not able to speak our truth, we're not able to show up fully as who we were made to be, we will be very, very tired. And the same is true for the opposite. So if you're not feeling kind of stuck in that free state or a lack of motivation, you're actually the opposite where you're always on the go. Uh, you always have a million mile long to-do list. You've always got a, a thousand things to take care of. That is hypervigilance, also very exhausting, also an activated nervous system state that does not let you rest, digest, heal, grow, or repair causing extreme fatigue again. And the only reason I can speak to the nervous system causing these issues is because I lived both of them. I remember for a long time, I was driven to achieve high achiever in the corporate world, accomplish six figures, gunning for the highest levels. And then I discovered trauma healing. And when I discovered that, I realized I was moving in between hypervigilance and freeze. And so 
when we are on the go, go, go for a long time, our nervous system gets really exhausted. And then we have to go into that freeze or fawn state for a little bit to recover. And so getting stuck in isolation or this feeling of stuckness or low energy and fatigue, and then spending some time there to recover and then jumping back into hypervigilance and creating, as Tony Robbins likes to call it, the crazy eight of just moving from activation to, or from depression to anger and aggression and, and moving back and forth. If you're anything like me, unhealed trauma might be one of the biggest causes for fatigue and exhaustion. And right alongside that will come depression and anxiety. I know I mentioned it with the last one. Really, this should be a sort, of, sort of a sub point between the two, but I've included it as its own. If you're feeling depressed, it is often driven by a feeling of not being able to escape a problem. You can feel that there is no way out, no resolution to whatever it is that is causing your depression. And of course, that can go hand in hand with anxiety. Sometimes we have just anxiety or just depression but we can also have both. And again, that contributes to the fatigue because we have those stress hormones flooding our body and this feeling of never being able to escape a life that is difficult. But I assure you, nothing lasts forever. If you are in depression, remember this phrase. And I had a woman who gave me a ring. My son was going to a Jewish preschool and the ring said, Gamzeya Avor, which in Hebrew meant that this too shall pass. Nothing lasts forever. And so that's why in the moments of bliss, we want to make sure we enjoy the moments of bliss. But in the moments of depression and anxiety, or even just that functional free state or the hypervigilance, we want to learn to come back to our body and our emotions and to let ourselves feel those things. If we don't, that's what keeps us stuck. And that's what can cause the fatigue and the exhaustion is this belief that we are stuck in that state for the rest of our lives or it will never end. And of course, that is not true because nothing does last forever. In fact, the only constant in life is change. And know that if you keep asking and if you're stepping into awareness or consciousness or becoming mindful in your life, you will start to see the patterns that create that stuckness or continue to perpetuate that state of being that causes the depression or anxiety. If you want to know more about new awakening or the dark night of the soul or depression, um, check out the other videos on this channel about that. And again, sort of tagging on to this topic right alongside it, whether we're in depression, anxiety, unhealed trauma, a perpetual fight or flight state, we will be suffering a lack of joy, lack of soul nourishment. If you are living a life that people tell you you should live, if you have done the whole go to high school, go to college, get a good job, buy a house, get married, have kids, and the white picket fence, and you get to that state of going, okay, I did all the things that they said would make me happy and I still don't feel happy, don't be surprised. You're not the only one. There's a vast majority of people who are waking up to this and it boils down to a lack of soul nourishment. What is right for you? And again, it goes hand in hand with trauma and depression and anxiety. When we live a life, they tell us we should live, they're shooting all over us. And inadvertently, we have lost touch with who we are, our authentic nature and what we need. And again, I'll use myself as an example. I didn't play with Barbies. I did play with a little bit of Barbies, but I wasn't your traditional little kid. I didn't play all the things that all the other kids played. I wanted to build a business. I wanted to be a businesswoman. I was putting my hair in a bun at five years old. Point being, you're probably not like everyone else. In fact, we all have a unique fingerprint for a reason. Every uh, snowflake has its own design for a reason. And it's very difficult for us to understand who am I and what do I need? Because at a very early age, we were put into the school system, the assembly line that taught us to be like everyone else. And it can be challenging, especially with unhealed trauma, to relearn who am I? What are my gifts and talents? What are the things that I love? How do I play? How do I have fun? This is my current task at hand is, is reawakening the, the inner being that says, this is what I really enjoy. This is how I want to go about my life. And so that soul nourishment is a critical component to having energy and vitality and not feeling so drained that there's just no life left in us. So seek joy find the things that bring you peace. There is something about a fuzzy blanket and I don't know what it is. I could have 12 fuzzy blankets and somebody gives me a new fuzzy blanket and I, it's just like the world to me. Thank you to my mother if she should happen to watch this video. She bought me a minky for my birthday a couple weeks ago and I, I like, I literally like snuggle with this thing. <laughs> I'm like a cat or, uh, you know, snuggling, but that's 
point being, this is something unique to me. Nobody could have said, ah, you have blonde hair and blue eyes. Therefore, minkies will make you happy for the, the rest of your life. You are just as unique. You have these little quirks, these little things that are solely your blueprint, that are solely the things that are going to feed you and make you feel excited for life. Find those things and it, just know that it could take time. If you're anything like me, you've gone halfway through your life not knowing who you are or what brings you joy. It's going to take time to find that. And right along with that comes uh, your needs and desires. No longer denying your needs and desires. Our needs and our, our desires are part of our blueprint. If we are here to fulfill a purpose, which I personally very wholeheartedly believe that you were made perfectly imperfect for a purpose, that is your path to joy. That is your path to thriving. And in your thriving, you then offer something to the world. That is your purpose. So your purpose is thriving so that you can offer your gifts and talents to the world. And that comes from understanding your wants, needs, and desires. Again, if we are suppressing our needs and desires, we're going to be fatigued. If we are nourishing our soul, we're going to come alive. There is a, a difficult conundrum that we're in right now because the world is a crazy place. We don't live in the same world that we used to. Things are harder than they used to be, but we want to be careful not to tell ourselves the story that I can't find happiness because, right? I can't find peace because there's not world peace. I can't find health because there's disruption in our food system. I can't find wellness because the medicines are also toxic for my body. We want to be careful because those are limitations that we are putting on ourselves. We are powerful, powerful beings. Dare I say hundreds of thousands of times more powerful than we realize. Our belief is everything and we can create our reality. And so if, if I am an unlimited being receiving from an unlimited source in unlimited ways to quote Louise Hayes, then I am limiting myself by saying, I can't do this because the world is too difficult. And I can speak from experience. I can tell you this honestly, having some of the most uh, difficult traumas to heal, it is possible to heal. It is possible to create a life you love, even in the face of adversity, even living in a toxic household with a partner that is very, very difficult and even traumatizing. It can be done. I can promise you that because I've done it. So you can find joy even in the face of adversity. You can create a life you love. You can make life worth living. It does require extra effort, but good news, those of us who've experienced complex trauma are survivors and we're really strong and we're really resilient. We just have to tap into that. So know that it is possible to find your joy, find your bliss, find your purpose and find energy and vitality and create a life you love. And finally, getting in the last two, the two juiciest ones, the two most aha moments that really light me up. These last two, these are the ones that make it all make sense. And it also brings hope because it won't last forever. So number 10, I find the most fascinating, maybe not the most fascinating. It's very fascinating. <laughs> number 11 is the most fascinating, but Number 10 is fun for me, and that is solar weather, solar energy, space weather. I have been getting into this the last couple of years. It's extremely exciting to know that we are, depending on who you ask, they might say we are either approaching or we are in solar maximum. And so space weather, solar flares or geomagnetic storms can be extremely fascinating to watch and keep up with. They can also be extremely exhausting for the body. Did you know that when you are in a solar maximum, you are also experiencing higher aggression and we also see historically more world wars, which I find fascinating because there is a siren going off outside, probably can't hear it, but I love the way the world echoes to us exactly what we are focusing on. So according to NOAA's space weather predictions, they did say last year that they were anticipating us entering the solar maximum in October 2023. They have since revised that and suggested that we may be entering solar maximum in the latter half of 2024 all the way through 2025. Some outlets have even said early 2026 can be good, can be challenging. I personally can experience this both ways. It can be uh, very exciting for a short amount of time at which then I will crash and be tired after, or I will feel a lot of fatigue as it comes in and then feel some peak in energy after. Point being, there's a lot coming in from the sun for us to tolerate and deal with. We are electromagnetic beings. The sun is sending geomagnetic energy towards us. And so of course, that is going to be disruptive to the system. Did you even know that just a lightning storm or a rainstorm can be disruptive to our electromagnetic 
body. They even said in 2019 that they are anticipating the peak could be stronger and more longer lasting than previously anticipated. After spending time watching the solar weather, it's pretty fascinating to see how intense it can get at times where we will have X-class flare after X-class flare after X-class flare. A handful of M-class flares a day is pretty common lately. D flares all day long is not uncommon either, but if you were to look at the averages during a solar minimum, a C-class or an M-class flare is pretty rare. So if you look at the peaks and valleys over the course of the 11-year cycle between solar minimum and solar maximum, what we are experiencing right now is quite a bit for us to tolerate and deal with. Again, very exhausting. So the challenge comes in when they try to determine when is the exact solar maximum. Well, we won't actually know that until six to seven months after we have been in the solar maximum because it is basically measured by the decline in solar activity. So as we keep getting activity, they keep saying, well, maybe it's coming or maybe we're in it. And it won't be until we're six to seven years, or uh, <laughs> not seven years, thank goodness, six to seven months outside of that peak window that we'll be able to look back and say, ah, that was a peak then and we have declined. So my tip around that is one, if you're anything like me, if you get extreme headaches, if you feel nauseous or woozy, if you have that extreme fatigue, you might want to start watching the NOAA website. The KP index is extremely helpful. Someone coined the term the other day, if you are space weather sensitive. So there's, there's a whole new level of sensitivity apparently because not all HSPs, highly sensitive people are sensitive to space weather, which uh, yay, another sensitivity. Um, but if you're anything like me, you will feel it coming in. You'll have the kind of like something's up or maybe things got really difficult all of a sudden or people are arguing a lot, like the kids are acting crazy. Um, I will notice the energy coming in before the KP index actually registers anything. So you might want to at least start paying attention to that if it might be something that's affecting you. It can at least be helpful, although we're not regaining energy from having that awareness. It is still helpful to know, okay, it's not just me right? There's something going on. Put your feet on the ground. That is kind of me speaking to myself as much as I am to you. Did you know that because we are electromagnetic beings, we need to be grounded just like our television or our, I was going to say VCR, but then I'm dating myself. Just notice that every plug in your house has a grounding cord because every electrical device needs to be grounded. And it, it's kind of crazy when you start to understand that we are also electromagnetic beings and we can frazzle out, we're out of sorts, we're fatigued, we're overloaded. So putting your feet on the ground is just like plugging in that grounding cord for your television. And that leads us into the conversation of the Great Awakening. I think this is the number one reason why we are all so tired. And I, I struggle to say that because who's to say one over the other, it's going to be different for everyone. But the Great Awakening is happening. It is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And it is where humanity is basically waking up from an unconscious sleep that we have been in for many, many hundreds or if not thousands of years. Who knows when the last time we were as awake as we are becoming now. Because humanity is collectively waking up to our humanity, our divinity, our power and authority, the world today, corruption, all of these things, it can be very jarring. It can be exhausting. And if you follow me, you know I use the example of cleaning out a closet. I have kids who play sports and so you know, if one comes home from soccer and one comes home from hockey and the other comes home from tennis and the other comes home from volleyball, we've got a lot of stinky socks <laughs> and we've got a lot of tools and equipment just all kind of shoved in there and it's stinky and it's messy and who knows who didn't eat their snack or their lunch and what's rotting in that bag. And that's kind of what has happened in the world today is there's been a lot of things happening behind the scenes and we've just kind of shut the closet door and we just kind of don't want to look at it. And now part of this great awakening is we got to open the door. We're opening the door and we're smelling the rotten food and we're seeing all of the things pour out of the closet that should have been organized that were not put away properly. And so while these things have existed for a long time, they've been around for a long time, we weren't paying attention. So it's not anything new. It's just that we're finally paying attention. We're finally noticing and we're finally cleaning things up. And so the Great Awakening is a beautiful thing, but it can be exhausting. It's kind of like a dark night of the soul for humanity because all the crap has to be shoved in our faces for us to see what is happening so that we collectively wake up and 
Some people will say that, you know, it's it's a battle between good and evil. Some people will say we're fighting a spiritual war. Personally, I believe that there is no fighting. There's acknowledgement, there's consciousness, there's waking up to it. And then there is taking my power and authority back from the, the matrix or the controllers, if you will, right? The people who tend to utilize our focus and attention to create for them. The way I win is by no longer participating. I will no longer buy into the fear. I will no longer buy into the conspiracies. I will no longer pay attention to things that bring down my energy. I will consciously take my focus, consciousness and attention and put it towards building something that creates something beautiful in the world and helps create heaven on earth. So yes, it is exhausting. Yes, it can really be draining to look outside of us and see that system's broken, that system's broken, that system's broken, that system's broken. It can be disheartening. And again, it ties into trauma, it ties into depression, it ties into negative thinking. The way that the body is flooded when we feel under attack is very exhausting. And yet it is all up to us. Our belief is everything, our perspective is everything, and our focus is growing what is coming next. And so we can win our energy back, we can take our energy back, we can cultivate new energy by knowing that they, whoever they is, are nothing without us. And just like in the kids movie, the ant movie, where the ants overcome the grasshoppers, it really is up to us to unite, to come together, to collectively focus on what we are building and no longer give our attention to the fear mongering. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Please know that I have lived every single one of these points. So if you need help with this, I am here to help. That is your purpose is my purpose. And I would love to support you in any way. And if you're newly awakened or you're just becoming conscious and aware of some of these things, you might be experiencing something like a dark night of the soul. I am honored to share my story with you and hopefully that would help as well. Check out this video. Otherwise, I will see you on the next one. Namaste, my loves.